Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. So today is an anticipated day for a lot of people. We are doing rotors and brake pads on an F30. All right, first things first, go ahead and put a chalk under your rear wheel, put your e-brake up, and then go ahead and jack the front of your car up. Always use an adapter, because otherwise you could ruin the plastic under here. Okay, once you've jacked up your car, go ahead and throw a jack stand under there for safety. All right, at this point, you can go ahead and remove your wheel. Now, if you are removing it manually, remember you wanna always loosen your lugs before you jack the car up. Uh, I like to use an electric impact gun because it's just super easy, there's no air compressor. And then it's a 17 millimeter socket. Always use the ones with the protective guard on it. So go ahead and remove these. And then pull your wheel off. All right, so here I'm gonna show you how to get this off. Don't look at the brakes yet. My video camera, stop, sh stop recording. Um, so basically what this is, is there's a hook here, there's a hook here. So what you wanna do is relieve the pressure here and then pop it off from the back. So to do that, you just get one driver, you pull it, and then you just go like that, and that'll release it. And then to get it back on, you can hook the bottom one, push it in and then you can see there everything fits nice it's nice and firm and that's how you do it so at this point what I like to do is I like to go ahead and remove the brake sensor first so just go ahead in here just pull this line free Drop this out of here just go ahead and disconnect that And just remove it from these other these other clips okay. we'll just set that out of the way all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the two 18 millimeter bolts there's one up here at the top and then there's just the one at the bottom as well then all you need to do is just use your superhuman strength and uh, and take it off uh, what you might want to do though is you might seriously want to spray some PP blaster or something on this uh, I have a bad torque wrench that I use for things like this, you never want to use a good torque wrench. You always want to use a breaker bar. Now, I have a breaker bar, it doesn't fit. So, we're going to go ahead and just try to use this instead. All right, so what I did is I just pivoted the wheel a little bit just to give myself just a little extra space to work. And it worked. So, just turning your wheel just a little bit will help you because this thing is not loose. Okay, so there's number one. And then just go ahead and do the same thing with the bottom. Now the bottom's a little bit easier because you just have a little more leverage. All right, so this is very important. So once you get to this point, you're going to be able to, once you remove this final bolt, you're going to actually pull the caliper off. You always wanna make sure that you have something to hang it. So what I have is, I have my favorite hanger here, and we are going to hang it actually from my spring because you don't want it hanging from the brake line. So go ahead and finish removing that. Okay, and you can just rock this up here, and then we have our brake caliper. So let's go ahead and uh, and hang this guy up. All right, we have our custom brake holder here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the rotor. So to do that, you need a six millimeter Allen key. So just go ahead and stick that in there. Now, because there's nothing holding this down, 
you are going to either need to secure it or just be pretty quick with it. So by quick, I mean use some kind of power tool. Uh, what some people do is they get a screwdriver, I don't have one here long enough, and you can actually wedge it in here so that as you turn, the rotor won't move. Uh, what I found also works is if you, if you just put it in and then just do those first couple movements really quick, it'll go ahead and, and it should come out pretty easy. And then once you get it to a point, you can just hand twist it the rest of the way out. And it's really small, it's, it's not very big at all. Okay, now I have never taken these rotors off, so, oh, all right, well that was pretty easy. I was, <laughs> I was getting ready for the worst. So, all right, so they just slide right off. All right, so now what you wanna do is go ahead and grab your new rotors. Um, these are power stops that I got at my local auto parts store, Amazon. So let's go ahead and just put these on. And you will notice that it does say front driver side. So it'll, it'll tell you where. Let's go ahead and put these in here. And then take your screw and put it back in. And I'll make sure everything stays lined up. Now what I like to do when I'm using a drill I like to use these adapters that you can put these sockets on, so it makes it nice and easy. So here's a quick difference of the old and the new. Now obviously when you buy OEM ones, they look a heck of a lot nicer than this. They look more like this, but I did go with a drilled and slotted rotor. All right, so here's what the old and the new pads look like. So you can see that I have about four millimeters left on on the old ones and then the new ones are greater than eight. So definitely a huge difference. So always remember that this goes on this side and then the ones with the metal clip, this will actually go in the piston, which is pretty cool how they designed that. All right, so the next part of the process, we're going to compress the brake piston. So what you wanna do is up top here, there are three 10 millimeter nuts that are plastic. Just twist them counterclockwise a little loop right here just go ahead and, and pull that off then what you want to do is just go ahead and remove the cap of your brake reservoir and then I like to just sit it back on top so nothing falls in there all right back down in our, our caliper go ahead and remove our our trusty hanger and then take a clamp with the old brake pad and just go ahead and twist that and you'll feel the brake piston actually going in. Now if you were to do it with the with the brake reservoir, the brake fluid res reservoir closed, uh, just doesn't really work as well. So this is definitely a lot easier, just go slow. You can see I'm using a C-clamp. Um, they do have these other devices that are specifically designed for this. They actually just go in here and then press, but essentially it does the same thing. So. Okay, and then just go until you feel a, a gradual stop. All right, then go ahead and press out your brake pad. If it's a little stuck, just give it a little encouragement. should be able to, to get that out. Then what you can do is you can just remove this entire bottom piece and you can just set that aside. All right, with this, what you wanna do, just go ahead and use some brake parts cleaner and clean those sliders up. And most of the brake pad companies will give you a little, little grease. So you can just go ahead and just apply a little bit on here just to make sure everything is, is lubricated properly. All right, so now what you can do is go ahead and just slide this right back in. And because it's lubricated, it should slide in really nice. Then take your brake pad that has that, that big clip on it. Let's go ahead and line it up. And 
make sure everything's looking good. All right, so next what you wanna do is go ahead and take your brake wear sensor before you clip this completely in. And just go ahead and just slide it in. And you'll hear it clip into place. So this is what that little groove looks like. It'll just go ahead and slide right in and then clip. And you can go ahead, press this in the rest of the way. And you can remove your trusty hanger. Put the pads in. And just go ahead and, and press this onto your rotor. And just go ahead and line up the holes and reinstall these bolts. Just tighten those back down. And go back and torque everything down. Now go ahead and take your brake wear sensor. Just go ahead and plug it in down here. Just plug it in over here. And go ahead and plug this in. It only goes one way. So just make sure that everything snaps in place. Press that in that little box and close the little box. The last sensor there. All right, so don't forget to put the spring back. Uh, it's good to hook it, move it over, and hook it, and just move it over. And that should be nice and tight. So go ahead and put your wheel on. Don't have any stickers or anything? Now's a good time to remove those. All right, so at this point, everything on the driver's side is complete. Uh, what we need to do is we need to just go back and do the other side. Um, the other side is a little bit easier because you don't have that sensor, but the sensor is pretty easy anyway, so it shouldn't make too much of a difference. So let's go ahead and, and do the other side, and then we'll show you how to reset the light. your reservoir cap back on. Reinstall this piece of plastic here. Then just turn these 10 millimeter bolts uh, to the right clockwise. Just a quarter turn. Just make sure you put the weather stripping back and then just push it in right over here. All right, so now this is one of the most important parts and it's a huge safety thing. So if you don't listen to anything else in the video, make sure that you pay attention to this. So. You want to pump your brake. Here's why. If you were to just hop in your car and try to drive somewhere, your pedal goes to the floor and your car will not stop. So what you want to do is just go ahead and just give it a couple pumps until the, the pedal starts to get firm again. And that will ensure that when you go to stop, your car will stop. Otherwise, you will roll. <laughs> All right, so for the last part, we are going to clear this away that basically says I need to do my brakes. So if you do have any other warnings, just hit OK until that goes away. And then what you want to do, just hit the start stop button one time. You don't actually want to start the car and then just hold this button over here. 
and it says reset possible, so we don't want to do that one. And this is the one we want to do. This is for the brakes. So you just hold it again, and it'll say reset. And you just hold it again. It says resetting in progress. And then the reset has been successful. So again, to do it, what you want to do is hit that start stop button. If you have any warnings, they're up on the screen, make sure you clear them, just hit OK. Then you want to go over here and just hold this little button for about 10 seconds or so. And it's going to give you, I'll show you again, it'll give you the menu of everything that you can have done. So this is the brake fluid. Um, then you have your oil. So what you want to do, if it says reset possible, you hold, hold the button again and it'll say reset. And then you hold the button a third time and then it'll actually go ahead and reset everything. All right, so at this point, everything is done. The light is reset and your car stops. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and have a great day. Bye-bye.